I'm just testing the stream is working on Twitter and I think we're there if you're watching us on Twitter hello you've joined us just before we actually go properly live which is great I'm gonna press the go live button now so here we go does me a nice little countdown and then we'll be ready to talk all things Leicester City Welcome. Yes, anyone there? Hi, Ivan Gibbs. How are you? Let's get your comment straight up there. He says, anyone there? Yes, Ivan. Hello. I'm here. It's 100% LCFC. It's Monday. It's 8.35. We've got to keep it sharp. We've got to finish at nine. Tom's coming on shortly, but he said to me, Phil, we must finish at nine. We all know why. Tom loves his Love Island. Jason Mills, hello to you, Jason. I can see Tom smiling there, but he knows it's the truth. Terry Fuller says, no, nobody here. Uh, Rob McFarland says, has it started? Yes, it has. You're on, Rob. Look. Hi, Phil and the team says, Chris Atkins. How are you, Chris? Um, come join us. Get your comments in. I'm saying all the hellos to start with. Ben Deacon, hello to you. Mike Jenner, thanks for tuning in. If you can like and share this video, that would be absolutely brilliant. Uh, Andreas is watching. That's superb. I'm going to give the plug, as ever, to all the sponsors who help us out. That's the guys at the Fox's Arms. That's Jamie's Pub in Alcudia. Pop out there, see him. Uh, Peter's Pizzas, Everard's, Drink Tiger, ADT Taxes, Hologram. That's the adverts over, isn't it? We don't. We'll talk a bit later, but honestly, thanks to those guys. They do so much for us. Darren Jones, hellos. David Tattersalls. Lee Clark, how are you, Lee? Some great graphics coming from Lee, which I'll put up shortly. What do you want to talk about? Do you want to talk about Claude Puel? Yes, we can talk about him. Yes, you can have your comments. Yes, you can have your views. I think we can say, are oh, you pule in, pule out, because that is still rumbling on. That definitely is still rumbling on. Daniel Harrison is saying, any transfer news? Um, we hear Alfie Mawson from Swansea has gone to Fulham, or he's going to go to Fulham, so there was some interest in him. Um, Jamie says, what's happening with Maguire? We'll definitely talk about Maguire. Uh, Rob is saying, if we paid £12 million pounds for Ward, Danny Ward, is Casper staying? I'm a bit with you, Rob, on that, if I'm honest. I'm suspecting... But there's only about 10 days left in the transfer window. So maybe are we getting getting a deal done before Casper goes? Chelsea reportedly interested. Guy Cooper, thanks, Guy. Guy is the guy who sorts out all the Lucky Gnome stuff for us. Guy, if you're still watching, thanks for your comments. Thanks from Cornwall. I think they're up in your mum's garden, a lot of the Lucky Gnomes. Can you get us some new photos for this season? John Barker, hello. I've been Gibbs. Puel out, there we go. There's bound to be some positive thoughts and positive thinking, says Graham. I'm with you, Graham. I am going to be positive. And here's Mr. Positive coming in on the wings. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Here is Tom. How are you, Tom? No, Love Island. Love Island out. <laughs> oh, Tom, just because people are watching, we all know you're a big Love Island fan and you, you're rooting for Danny and Jack. <laughs> and uh... Who? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> Let's, uh, Terry says, have you heard the interview with Puel on Radio Leicester? Interesting. Now, Terry, I haven't. Tom, have you? I haven't had the interview yet. Now I've let you all to the door and set up to join you for a chat tonight. So I haven't had a chance to uh, listen to the podcast yet, see what Puel had to say about today. I'd seen a couple of notes saying that he basically said that he wasn't prepared to sell Michael and Maguire. Uh, that was about it, really. So I haven't really seen the full interview yet. Uh, probably, if you had heard it, you might have fell asleep. Am I allowed to say that? Is that a bit harsh? Yeah. Come on, Positive. Tom. Positive. Positive. I think everybody's allowed their own views, aren't they, Tom? I know you were rooting, not rooting for Puel, but you, you're, we're probably, most of the 100% team here are saying, let's give him a fair fair chance, aren't we? Well, I think if you look at it from when you joined the club, I've never said Puel out. I think if you look all my interview, you can look back through them and, you know, when we've had chats and stuff on here, that I've always said you've got to give him a chance. The club are building, he, he's trying to build something and it's going to take time. The style of play, the way he plays with a lot of youngsters, it's going to take time to get into, you know, to used to it. And I said at the end of last season, he wasn't going to get sacked and the club were never going to sack him. So, you know, I'm, I'm happy the club are giving him a chance. Yeah, Chris, Chris Atkins says in Puel we have faith. Um, that's good. Andrew Cornish says it's too late to sell any first team players now. Puel needs to keep them if he's going to have any chance of a successful season. I mean, 
I think, Tom, I think Andrew has a good point there, but we probably would like to sort of ship out a couple. We've got a lot of a lot of players in the team. I know we were talking Slimani. There's three clubs interested in Slimani, Fenerbahce and uh, Sporting Lisbon being two of them. I can't remember the third one off the top of my head. But they're all three clubs interested in Slimani, but they don't want to pay for him. They don't want to pay 18 million and they don't want to pay his wages. And wages, I think, Tom, is an issue, isn't it, for maybe a couple of other players you've got in mind? I think in general, if you look at the, the squad that went on tour, 31 players, and that was without uh, Vardy or Maguire in it. So there's 32 squad players or players that he's taken out in pre-season. That's a massive pre-season squad in theory when you look at most of the Man Citys and Arsenal's are down to about 22 to 25. What is the squad for a season? So to have about 30 players out with him there shows that he's willing to give the kids a chance. Uh, but at the moment, one... Every day, another day goes in the transfer window. For me, it's less likely that Maguire and Casper uh, will leave the football club because no time to replace them. So it lets the days go quicker. Uh, two, he has got to move players on, I think, before we bring anyone in because I think if we keep bringing players in, we'll get ourselves into uh, financial fair play problems with the amount of squad players we've got on the wages. So the likes of Slomani, I think we said Leonardo, uh, Musa, depending what he's going to do with him this season. Then you've got Matty James and Andy King. I mean, you've got a lot of players who fit their midfield and striking roles. Uh, if you look at the balance of the team now compared to last season, I think it's a lot more balanced with the defence than what we had last season with Pereira and Johnny Evans coming into the football club. I know we lost Robert Hoof, but I think we're just a bit more balanced now on that right-hand side because... I think we saw the weekend that Daniel Amati is not a right back, never will be a right back. He he gets caught up way too easy with balls around the corners. He just doesn't look a player to me who can play in the Premier League at the top level. Uh, and I just think we're, we're more balanced. And I think it'll be interesting to see where he can move players out before he brings players in for us now. Um, Terry says 31 players in Australia, not to mention some internationals. Puel is saying the squad is too big. Um, Jason says that the interview with Puel earlier was all about keeping Maguire and nothing about new signings. I think you're right. He's, he's got, I think there will be some business, Tom, before the transfer window shuts, which is a week on Thursday, literally 24 hours before our first game. Um, Scooby says to give you, to give a manager, 10 games, which is 30 points, and see where they're at. I think that's all he will get given, Tom, if I'm honest. I think if we have a bad first 10 games. I, I think it's the standard now of the Premier League. I think they'll give you 10 games to see where they're at. I think if we're somewhere around 12th, between 9th and 12th, I think he'll be all right. I think they'll, they'll accept that. If we're somewhere you know, down the bottom three with very minimum points on the board, like Shakespeare found out, I think... He would go to the trap door, but I also, you know, I think the owners are going to be a bit patient with him this time because they don't want to keep shopping and changing and be in the same scenario this time next year, where if we have to bring another manager in, he's got another pre-season, he might not like Pereira, he might not like Silva, and we've got, a, a, you know, another massive squad you've got to trim down. So, in theory, I think the owners will try and stick with Puel as long as they can to try and rebuild that squad, because at the moment, I wouldn't say it's a mess, I just think we've got a lot of dead wood at the club that we need to move out. Yeah, um, Darren saying, I'm hoping the season gets off to a flying start and get some good results coming in in the first games. Um, Peter, I'm trying to read out as many comments as are. Loads of people watching, which is brilliant. Please, if you can like and share our videos and subscribe to us 100%. There's going to be loads more live content coming out this week and every week going forward. But anyway, Peter Hill says that the overreaction is comical. Why criticise the youngsters when some of the first teams are not available? He says, get real peeps and support. That's our job. Um, which I think, Peter, that's good. And hopefully that is exactly where people are going. Uh, the people who say, this is Wayne, saying the people who say we're a feeder club for bigger clubs are sad Man United fans. Um, Reese is saying we, we expect top six. Adam is saying Morgan can go. Adam is saying James can go. Uh, Reese is saying James can go. Kevin is saying Pure will get 10 games, then judge from there, which is, is what we're saying. Um, somebody, I can't remember who, and I will try and find who it was, Tom, and put it on screen, said, what do we think? And there has been a lot of Danny Drinkwater rumours, Tom. 
It's a tricky one because I say at the moment we're, we're, we're overloaded in midfield, so I can't see us signing Danny until we've moved players out. So unless we move two out to bring one in, I think that'll be a lot at the moment. You'll move two players out to bring one player in. So if you get rid of Soleimani and Leonardo, you'll bring one striker in. If we get rid of two midfielders, you'll bring one midfielder in. I can't see them bringing any more than that. I think if we're looking at players, you'd probably play maybe three at max to come into the football club. But that's probably on the basis that we lose six players, uh, you know, to try and get the wage structure down a little bit and, you know, trim the squad back to a better size than it is at the moment. Graham's got a point here. He says, can we send players to our sister club, club which is OH Leverhoon or whatever? I think some, some there are some Leicester players there already, aren't there? Some of the youngsters. A, cu- a couple of the youngsters out there. I think uh, Moore's out there, is it? Elliot Moore, I think, might be out there on loan. Yeah. Uh, I don't know what the, the rules are for how many players we actually can send to the feeder club. Uh, it'd be interesting to see. I mean, that name there, Kapuska, is another one who's, I thought he's done well in the pre-season games, what I've seen. Uh, again, he looks a bit more beefed up now since he's joined the football club. I think they've probably worked on his strengths-wise. And from you know what we saw at the Euros a few years ago, he looked a half-decent player. I think it's just going to take him time to develop into this Premier League standard. And I think we've got to be careful about what we, you know, we do with the youngsters when they've not settled in as quick. Because look at Kramerich now. He went from us to... Uh, uh, Hoffenheim, uh, Hoffen, it? Yeah, Hoffenheim, yes, it was, yeah. Germany, and he scored some absolute brilliant goals for them, and he's had a tremendous season, topped off by getting to a World Cup semi final. So, uh, you know, oh, sorry, final, that, you know, so we've got to be careful with the youngsters. And if it's not worked out this season, let's not rush to just kick them out the back door and get, go somewhere else to work. Uh, Reese Taylor says, Will All Brighton get a game? I think, I think Mark All Brighton's been suffering with an injury, hasn't he, Tom? I'm sure he will feature although he was a bit in and out at the end of last season but yeah I'm one of all Brighton's biggest fans so hopefully he will uh, Anthony Ta- Howard hi Anthony how are you says hello Ash is saying hi Tom um, Kevin is saying drink water on loan and we've inquired about yes I'll say I can't say his name do you know how you say it I'll say sir Tom I'll say Barcelona yeah, striker. He scored. He scored about seven or eight goals last season for Barcelona's first team. Played about eighteen games. A few in the cups. Uh, any thoughts on him? Again, he's not a player I've you know really had much about. But if the club have seen enough of him to sign him, then you know if it's on a loan signing, why not give him a loan? See what we can get out of him. Uh, you know, then you've not got another player on the books who we you know in a year's time he's not settled in the Premier League. Again, I don't. I don't think we need that much strike force. Why? I think if we need to sign a striker, you've got to be looking at a target man to replace Leonardo and Slavani. Uh, and I think there's a couple out there who probably could do the jobs. And if you, if you, for me, we need experience in the Premier League a little bit now more than just going out and finding someone who's you know available. Yeah, um, Reese is saying OHL signed George Hurst from Coventry, who we wanted. Uh, Lee. Chappy, hi Lee, how are you? Have you named your daughter yet in that fantastic football competition we started last week? Name Lee Chappy's daughter. Anyway, he says, join us, join Lee on here at 8.30 on Wednesday. That's the next live show that's planned in. As is Don and Dipak are back this Thursday for their late night foxes. Um, you need to buy yourself some beers and settle down with them and have a few beers. Uh, lots of Deadwood, says Dara, needs shipping out. John Chilton says when is Vardy back um Adrian is saying put Chowdhury out on loan well I certainly wouldn't put Chowdhury out on loan I think he's looking well I I think he looks pretty consistent Chowdhury for me um Tom you wouldn't loan Chowdhury out would you now he's looking like he's broken into the team yeah, one, he's broken into the team. Two, he'll get the captaincy role in the under-23. What he's got, so that leadership's good for him. I think uh, there's certain players who, yeah, you'd send out on loan to get the, the game time. I think with him, he'll get enough game time in the cup competitions. And also, I think you'll find he'll, he'll come off the bench in games when we need to hold a midfielder if you haven't got players fit like Ibora and then Diddy. Because we will be careful, isn't it? We found at the end of the back end last season, we sent out Andy King on loan. We then lost Matty James. We then lost uh, Ibor, and we were suddenly left with Adrian Silva and uh, uh, Chowdhury as your central midfield partnership. And Indidity was injured, and we had no players left. So you've got to be careful not to send too many players out low because we don't want another scenario where we're down to the bare bones again. Um, David Gamble's got an interesting point, and I was bleating on about this a few weeks ago. Um, David says there's been no Premier players brought into the squad. 
which um, makes him think we're, we're going to struggle. I, Ricardo Pereira played pretty well on what we saw of him on Saturday, I think, Tom. Um, Madison, I'm a big fan of Madison already, but he's not played against the highest quality yet. Valencia will be a slightly different kettle of fish and obviously Man United, but I really like him. But has David got a bit of a point, Tom? Are you a bit fearful that, again, we're not buying in, I suppose, Johnny, you know, Johnny Evans, but... Yeah, I mean, it's always a concern when you're going out into the foreign market and bringing in, you know, foreign players who haven't, doesn't know this league because of the competitism uh, and how, you know, fit and mentally turned on, I think the word is you're looking for, are switched on for 90 minutes. You can't make a mistake in this league as a centre-half and midfielder because 90% of the time you get punished by the opposition scoring. Uh, I think, like I said, I think we're more balanced now. I think we've got more options with this signage we've made because if you look at it, we can play this... 4 2 3 1 because it means the wing, well, full backs in, I think, who will be starting Emmanuel will be Pereira and uh, Chilwell, bomb on and open the play up more. The two holding midfielders then sweep in behind on the right and left when they need to. I think you also give them the option you can play a 4 3 3 if he really wants to go down that road, or you also can play a, a 3 5 2. The players he's brought in really have opened up Leicester's formations this season, where I think last year we were stuck to either 4 4 2 or a 4 3 2 1. What didn't really work because they didn't have the overlapping fullbacks in Simpson and Fuchs. Chilwell started to play a lot more in that second half of the season because he can get forward and back. But I, and generally, if I'm honest with you, the name on uh, people will laugh at it. I, I really wish we'd gone someone like Rondon at uh, West Brom. Now, people say it's another relegation player, but if you look at his goal to game for the last four or five seasons in the Premier League, he's always scored between 10 to 15 goals in the Premier League. That's the kind of strike we need. Someone who's going to score 10 to 15 goals just to take that pressure off Vardy a little bit. Uh, he's built, you know, he can hold the ball up, he can lay it off. He probably won't start many games, but you know what you're going to get if we need him to? There's a plan B. Where at the moment, I don't know if Puel actually trusts Leonardo Joa or Slomani to come on and have a plan B because, no offence, Slomani can't really win a flick on considering the size. And Leonardo hasn't got the best touch in the world to hold the play up as well as he used to and pass it around. Uh, Robert Bird agrees with you about Rondon. Let's see if anybody else does, Tom. I'm going to try and read out as many comments as I can quickly. Um, a few. We did chat about Danny Ings um, over the weekend on 100% LCFC. He is a bit injury prone, as Neil Bennett is saying. Uh, Dan Shearer says, we need some of these youngsters out on loan to Premier teams if possible. Josh Knight would benefit. He looks like he's going to be a good defender. Uh, I think Darnell Johnson's looked pretty decent, what I've seen of him as well. So um, Morgan's legs have gone, says Robert Grace. Um, certainly what I saw of him live at Notts County, there was a few times even against that, that level of play, he looked at his first game back, so give him some breathing space, but looked a bit out. Do we keep King as cover or let him go? I think most fans, well, we ran a poll and 68% of fans said keep King and he's certainly a decent squad player for me. Adrian is saying his midfield is Ndidi, Ibora and Madison as three in the centre. Uh, Sam would loan out Diabati. He says it's probably an unpopular opinion, which it certainly would be unpopular with me because I like the look of Diabati. I think that's a strange one, Tom. No offence to Sam, but... Mm, I, I, Do you see I where Sam's coming from? I can see his point of view in some ways because he's very inconsistent. It's a bit like Damari Gray sometimes when he gets the ball and very frustrating to watch. You can have a moment of brilliance like we saw against the Arsenal when he flipped the ball around the corner. <laughs> but then he can be like at the weekend where he was trying so many things and blasting balls across the penalty area where you're just hoping that little bit of calmness. I think if you look at the wings, wingers at the moment, you've got Diabate, Albright on one side, you've got Kapuska and Gray on the other side. Madison could always push onto the right-hand side as has played a right-hand side midfield. So I think at the moment you probably you wouldn't send him out alone because you don't want to, again, leave yourself short with the wingers. As I say, a rule of thumb is two players per position. At the moment, we're not far off that. We're literally just overloaded with the strike force and the central midfielders. Uh, Joseph Alev Allen says, uh, what about Ings? We've talked about that. But we have been linked with Craig Dawson of West Brom. Uh, he's 28 years old. Centre-back obviously would know Johnny Evans well. Would that be, I mean, we've obviously missed out on Dragovic, haven't we? So... Yeah, I mean, look, we all, a lot of people go into the saying that oh, do you keep signing all these players for relegation teams? But as someone said earlier, Harry Maguire and uh, Roberts, who's at Liverpool, ain't done bad since they left their two clubs. 
Uh, we'll, Dawson, again, it, it free up options, I think, if you look at a player like that, because he can play centre-half, but he's also played probably 50% of his time was right back for West Brom, and he's not a quick, you know, not a slow centre-half. He's very quick and nimble. So if the opportunity to bring him in, yeah, you, you would, I think it'd be a good signing. But again, it would probably be on the basis that you let someone like Ben Oloan go, because all the, suddenly you're top sided with centre-halves and you ain't going to be able to play with them and keep them happy. I'm going to have to pull... I'm putting comments on as we go along because there's that many comments going, which is great. But Mike James says up the forest. Mike, seriously. Ban. Uh, what? Yeah, ban, ban. What What do we do? Put your comments in. What do we do with Mike James? Of course, we let him be on here, but we'll just ridicule him, won't we? Not in forest. It'd be absolutely lovely to play forest at some point in the next 10 years. It's not going to happen because we'll be in different divisions like we have been for the last five. But uh, anybody wants to put Mike, a friendly band, to comment in, glad you're watching. Feel free to come and join the Blue Army down the road. We know you don't really care about us. Anthony Howard says Mike can get out. <laughs> well done. Well done. Keep it clean anyway. Um, is Okazaki going to be part of the team? Has been a big hero at the club, same as Albrighton. Any views on Okazaki and Albrighton to a bit there, Tom? And there's, I mean... Oh, I I think Okazaki is massive for the, in general of the team itself the, within the spirit. I don't think he'll play as much as he has played over the last few seasons. But again, he's getting on. At, he's not getting any younger. But I think the benefit of him being around the club is a couple of things. One, he can work with uh, Madison, the same kind of position that number ten role Lincoln will play. It might be able to help him, you know, become a better player if he wants to learn at that position more. And I think Okazaki is a great teacher of that. Uh, but I think there's games where we saw last year we were crying out for Okazaki to come and help them. There might be games where Madison start and isn't having the impact and we're, we're looking for that link-up play. So it, it'll be around the squad. Oh, going to Albright, and again, we all know what Mark Albright can do. It can be frustrating at times when he hits the first man, but when he gets the ball in the box, you know, a pinpoint cross, we all know how deadly those crosses are and what goals we can see from them. So it's also his work rate. And if you play in a wing-back role, I can see him being in and around that. Yeah. It'll be interesting to see with the formation at Man U where, where we go. At the moment, I think it'll be a 4-2-3-1 for that opening game of the season. Uh, Lee Chappie says, Harvey Barnes scored instantly for the Baggies. Can we stop signing unproven and trust in our own that we already have? It's an interesting one. It's an interesting one. Um, no to drinky coming back, no, says Neil Bennett. Yeah, go on, Tom. Going to our, the, the, the Barnes ones, I've, I've spoken to a lot of Leicester fans about this and I've spoken, being someone who's in Worcestershire Redditch, I know a lot of West Baggy fans and speaking to him today about him and said, what have you done letting him go? And I was like, this, the reason we let him go was we did it last season. He was on loan at Barnsley, he scored eight goals and five assists. Peel brought him back, played in what, three games? I think Fleetwood twice and then in Peterborough. He never played again since and I think it didn't help him in any way bringing him back from that loan spell where he was playing really well. You can't keep all the kids around the club. It doesn't work. We wouldn't be able to progress, you know, as a team if you have it just full of kids. You've got to have it mix it up. And at the moment, I think Pugh just thinks that loan spell for another season in the Championship, well, I think it's one of the toughest leagues in the world to go and develop your game where you're going to get smashed, you're going to get tackled hard. He'll, he'll but, you know, toughen him up a bit. And I think general, he'll do him some good to be in the Championship for another season. Um, Mike, <laughs> David Cavin says, Mike, go home. And Neil Ryan said, wait, they have internet in Nottingham. <laughs> Bless. Uh, so a bit of bit of forest bashing there. That'll cheer us up. Um, Tom, uh, last week, and I, again, I'll put it out there a little bit. We we all saw, we know Riyad Mahrez has gone. I think for me that my jury is very much out on this close season at the moment until obviously the, the transfer window shuts. Um, it's going to be very interesting, Tom. Harry Maguire, isn't it? Again, but as I said earlier, the, the, the wall these days tick by, the less the, the football club will sell him if they, you know, they don't feel they're going to get a replacement. You know, we saw that what happened in January with Riyad trying to force a move and the club went, no, we haven't got anyone to replace you. We're not going to sell you. So I, I don't think the owners will be bullied into selling unless one, they get the 80, 90 million pounds, what I think they'll be looking for, for uh, Harry Maguire. And two, if it comes down to one day before the transfer window, unless they've got someone lined up who's quality and they know we're going to be able to replace him and keep this team going, they're not going to, you know, just sell him for the sake of it. So I think every day what ticks by is a day less that he will leave this football club and there's more chance he'll be there at Man on the opening day of the season in the Leicester shirt. Um, Scooby, and a f quite a few people have commented, would, would you make Maguire captain, Tom? Yes. 
Yeah, just as simple as that. The two players who for me now should be captain of the football club. One, I don't I don't agree with the cast movement. I don't like goalkeepers as a captain. No, well, I, I think don't. Have an There's only two players for me who then fill that, well, three players who I'd say. One would be Maguire. Two would be Johnny Evans, because I think he's experienced at Man U. He's a leader. The third one would be Vincent de Bora, again, another leader of the park. You've got to have an experienced player as a captain. And I think the World Cup has probably brought Maguire out of his shell more than anything. And I think he will get the respect of the team if he came in as a captain as well. Tom, we've I know I know you want to go Love Island. It's ninety seconds away. What's your starting? What's at the moment? What's your starting eleven? It's on record, by the way, Love Island. Don't worry about it. <laughs> You've Sky Plus it because you don't want to watch the adverts. I get that. Carry on. So I'm going to go with the team. I think he'll play, not the team I'd like him to play. The team I think Pew will go for with the signings he's made. So I think he'll start with Casper in goal. I think you'll see a back four of uh, Pereira. Maguire, Evans and Chilwell. I think you'll see a two in midfield of Iboran and Diddy. I think you'll see then James Madison sitting uh, there. Uh, four, two, three, one. Wing is probably, I think he'll go all Brighton. Uh, and I have a feeling Gray will be in that starting mm. side as well. And then Vardy up top, waiting the runs in behind. I mean, it's hard because I'd love to see Vardy and Nacho getting a game together, but at the moment, if he's going to stick to his four-one, sorry, four-two-three-one, that it's very difficult to fit Nacho into that unless he drops Madison and plays Nacho as the ten, what he did at Tottenham, and it worked. But I don't see him paying money for players and not playing them. If you get what I mean, I I'm sort of hoping he's going to play a five at the back, three three centre backs with Pereira, and I think he will go for Chilwell. Um, so I think it'd be five at the back. And then, like you say, I think he's only going to play Vardy up top. And I think he may have Madison just behind him with Gray and Diabati either side. I think he does like, I actually think he does like Diabati and he does like Gray. And Madison is definitely going to be part of it. It's just it's just how you slot people like. I'm, I'm actually preferring a little bit of what I see of Chowdhury than I see of Ibora maybe, Tom. I know that'll be controversial, but I'd, I'd, I like Ibora, but he's not always, he doesn't seem always on his game to me. So I'm I'm quite liking Chowdhury. I don't think he'll go for Chowdhury. I, th- I think the only like I say, I know, I know what you mean with Ibora. He has spells in games where he'll miss, miss Judge a pass or he'll get caught on ball. But I think if you look at it 90% of the time, you, you probably, I think he's that Roll Royce we miss. He does get his foot on the ball. He's calm. He doesn't panic when the ball comes to him. He knows where the next pass is going to be. I agree that probably there is a 10% in each game that he switches off maybe and he does give the odd occasional ball away in the wrong areas. But you know what? When he does, he's the first one to react to try and get that ball back. He doesn't just stand there and look at it. He knows he's made a mistake. He tries to react to the problem. Okay, there's a few at the weekend. He looked poor, but you know what? It's pre-season. It's, I think for me, it's about the match fitness and Anything else, you know, they can work on that. So, Tom, um, you're starting your own show this Friday, aren't you? Live here on 100% LCFC every Friday evening. Tell us a little bit. Yeah. Basically, a tactic show, looking at the team for the Saturday, looking at the opposition team, who their you know weak points are. I feel the weak points are, and we'll have chats about it with the fans. But also looking at their, you know, maybe not the star player, but the player that probably could cause us some uh, trouble each game. So. We'll be looking at the opposition as well as the team we think Leicester will put out for that uh, game against the, you know whoever we're playing. And as ever, keen to get fans watching live, getting views and comments in. That's what we're all about. So Tom is every Friday now from this week live, 8.30. Lee Chappie every Wednesday, 8.30. Do you like how I'm doing this in absolutely no order? Don and Dipak every Thursday at 10-ish. Um, and Jamie every Sunday at 9.30. So it's getting busier and busier here on 100% LCFC, isn't it, Tom? Yeah, it's good. I mean, at the end of the day, we're, we're here to give our views, but we want everyone else's views. Everyone has a right for a view. We're not going to stand here and say, no, you can't say that, because that football is all about different opinions, and that's what we want in this show. <laughs> Adrian says, you're going to have to improve your, your office behind you, Tom. He <laughs> says, your cupboards are shocking. <laughs> <laughs> He's cheeky, isn't he? Hey, we're all, re- we're all keeping it real here, aren't we? Uh, Tom, it's three minutes past nine. Love Island is on. I know you don't want to watch it, really. Somebody actually gave you a bit of grief earlier. (laughs) Tom is not really a Love Island fan. It's me. 
See you later. <laughs> Bye.